It's time for the chip race. For strategy this week, we are joined by a poker player, Twitch streamer, and member of Poker Stars Team Pro, Parker Tonkatabo. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to have you on the show. This hand comes from Poker Night in America's King of the Hill show for back in 2017. I think this is the second edition of that show and Helmut had come back as defending champion, but you defeated him in round one and we're now playing Olivier Bousquet in the final. This hand comes from that final. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. You have 89,800 chips to Olivier's 110,200. The mm-hmm. blinds are 501k, no ante. So the hand is 90 bigs effective with no ante. Olivier raises on the button to 2,500 with the king jack of diamonds. You call with the jack six of clubs. All fairly standard so far. So I think let's move straight to the flop. The pot is 5,000. The flop comes king of clubs, queen of diamonds, 10 of clubs, a monster for both of you. You check, Olivier bets 2,500 and you call. Parker, did you give raising serious consideration here? Okay, first of all, let's preface this with, I don't even know how many years ago this is. So let's just start with, I think I was a lot worse as a player at this time than I currently am. And I feel like actually watching this hand back now and thinking about it now, like the majority of Olivier's play in this hand is just going to be because I am a weaker opponent. I don't think I really considered raising then, but like I totally could have, like, I think it's totally plausible. You can go either way. Well, Dara, you found something interesting that I think we both suspected ahead of running this spot. This is not really a half pot bet spot for Olivier. Yeah, well, essentially, I mean, if you're both playing GTO ranges, which again, you may not have been back that far ago, but if that's the case, then Tonk is at a fairly significant disadvantage on high card boards because if you think about the pre flop, Olivier raises, so he's basically raising top 85, 90% to hand. So the only hands he's folding are like the worst offsuit combos. So he has all the high card hands. Tonk on the other hand with three bet, most are all of those hands. So that does put him at a pretty significant disadvantage on high card boards. I mean, Busquet obviously still has a lot of garbage in his range, given how wide his range is, but he does have the knotted advantage and, and the overall equity advantage. He also has a lot of middling hands that don't really want to bet too big, which might be why he decided to go half pot here. He decided, well, you know, my middling hands don't want to put too much money in the pot. But the way the solver breaks this down is it just splits it between two ranges, an overbet range and a checking range. So the middling hands that want to get to showdown mostly go into the checking range and the strong hands and the bluffs mostly go into the overbet range. And with Olivia's exact hand, it pretty much just pure overbets. Yeah, the, just to give people an idea of like why Olivier will have been getting this wrong, it's like the solvers are very susceptible to like the size that you could give them, right? So like I can almost not guarantee you, but like four or five years ago, Olivier probably wasn't running his sims with an overbet on the flop potentially. Yeah. Maybe he was, and he just determined that like the EV of it or like the outcome that he was going to gain from it like wasn't fucking worth implementing it into his game. So like he might have only ran the simulation with a small bet, say a quarter a half pot size and like a pot size or like a 75% pot size, right? And if you give the yeah. solver only those limitations on this board, it'll almost certainly favor like that half pot size with like a large portion of your range just would be my guess. That's absolutely right. I think people didn't realize just how much overbetting there was back, right. back in the day. So like he's probably nailing like the strategy that he's like laid out for himself, but like with more correct parameters these days, we now know that like, yeah, he fucked up. It's also possible, I mean, the EV differences are quite minute, but it's also possible, as Parker alluded to, that he might have decided he's deliberately diverging here to lower variance. If he does feel he has a fairly significant edge post-flop, there's a lot to be said for... There's no need to be over... If you're against a weaker opponent, there's absolutely no need to be implementing an overbet strategy. That's one of those things that, like, you do when it's very, very elite. Edges are incredibly similar. Like, if Olivier thinks he has, like, a chunk of of edge over me, which he definitely had, even if he knows that that's the play, he's probably not going to use it. Yeah, absolutely. And the other interesting thing, coming back to the should we call or raise, when we use the size that Olivia did use, which is half pot, then mm-hmm. PO spits 40, 60 between raising and calling. So both options are fine. Calling is done slightly more often. Okay. Well, with that knowledge now locked in to the turn, the pot is 10,000. It comes the nine of diamonds. So the board now reads king of clubs, queen of diamonds, 10 of clubs, nine of diamonds. Tonga, you decide to lead out here for 5,500 and live calls. You've both made a king high straight and you both have a draw. I, I guess he can have the nut straight, but you can't. Parker, can you talk us through your decision to lead rather than go for, say, a check raise in this spot? Did you think he would check back too often? 
I guess so. Honestly, speaking about it, like, I don't know why I led, like, this is just bad. This is just, like, flat out bad. Like I said, like, we had to preface this hand with this is four years ago where I was playing a much different style of poker. I would assume basically just more uninformed, not as good, I would say. And, like, this lead is just flat out bad. I mean, for all the reasons that Dare laid out on the flop, right? Olivier has the range advantage and position on this board. Nothing has changed with the nine. In fact, you know, like, he has probably a higher mix of Jack X hands just because I'm going to derive a lot of my three bets from, like, those Broadway cards. So I'm just going to naturally not have as much Jack X as him. So, like, it just makes literally zero sense. You know, there's no reason for me to do this. Uh, like you said, like the only real reason that you can bring out is that you're scared that your opponent's going to check back. I have a straight with like backup uh, to go with it. So that makes sense on a very level one thinker level. Well, Darren, we often talk about balance and balanced lines. And I guess Parker is alluding to issues he may be having here with this lead out. He's going to struggle to balance a leading range in this spot. Why is it easier to balance a check raising range? Yeah, I mean, Parker kind of nailed it there. He said, like, our hand definitely wants to lead because it doesn't want to allow to check behind. It wants to get more money in now, but our range definitely doesn't. Apart from the straights, which we happen to have now, our range is pretty much all weak, like King X and Queen X type hands that have to check. And we need to protect this checking range. We can't just check all those hands and then let him pounce on that. We need to hold back our strong hands for our check raises. So, yeah, the, the solver pretty much plays this just as a pure check raise. For sure, yeah. Just delving outside of that. So like you say, solve replaces good check raise. I was actually going to say that's going to be the outcome. And the reason that's going to be the outcome is because we have a flush drop. You wouldn't check raise here. Probably low frequency, if at all, I would assume. I, you probably do raise sometimes still, but like it won't be a pure check raise or I would assume anywhere close with just a naked jack. When you have the flush draw to go with it, you free roll all of your opponent's jacks, right? So if I check here, Olivier has king jack without the diamonds, he's going to bet his trade, right? Maybe he tosses in a check for a little bit of traps but like a lot of the time, a lot of opponents, maybe not Olivier again, but like a lot of opponents are just going to bet their straight. And when they bet their straight, you just get to raise and free roll the shit out of your opponent for the most part. So like that makes so much more sense than this donk. Again, this donk just makes no sense. We just definitely want to go for it. And I would honestly say that Olivier fucked up playing against my donk as well, because <laughs> even though he's in position, I would say that the same logic applies for everything that I just said, right? I mean, he knows I don't have ace jack because like if I have ace jack, it's like a very low mix ace jack. And we're 90 bigs deep. I should be three betting ace jack suited pure weight and like ace jack offsuit. I would assume I'm not great heads up. I don't know what the gay tail ranges are, but like I would assume that ace jack offsuit is probably close to pure, if not pure as well. So he knows I don't have ace jack, right? So like he knows his jack is like the nuts at the moment or, or chopping, whatever. So like he wants to fucking free roll me now. Unless he thinks that I'm crazy bluff heavy, but he obviously doesn't because he folded the river, right? So, like, he knows that I'm probably very dense, like, Jack X, and, like, he should just fucking hammer me. He should just make it 18K, 18, 19K, and just free roll the shit out of my Jack X. So I think it's the same thing for me check racing, to be honest. I think he made a mistake in the hand, too. So yeah, it's this not is just me making the mistakes. Yeah, this is absolutely true. A P.O. Pure raises Busquets' hand. Well, at least there's a pair of you added here, Parker, to the river. The pot is 21,000. The river comes the nine of clubs. So the board now reads king of clubs, queen of diamonds, ten of clubs, nine of diamonds, nine of clubs. Dara, Parker has improved to a flush on this now paired board. Liv still has his straight. He leads 17,000, 81% of pot and Liv folds. I reached out to Liv ahead of this segment, I got to say, because uh, I was interested to get both your perspectives on this one. And I asked him about this street. He simply told me in, I think it was all caps, what bluffs does he Yeah, have that's what I was going to say. It's like, bluffs, it's actually yeah. like, it's honestly like not that interesting of a hint because like the river is such an easy fold, right? There's like literally, what, what that's what I was going to say. Like before you said it, I was going to be like, and like the river in his shoes is actually like a very easy fold because what bluff can I have? It's literally my only bluff is like ace X of diamonds, right? And like that would involve me having to like donk lead the turn with ace X of diamonds and then bluff the river as well with said brick flush draw. Like it's just, there's no fucking way. It's like, it's actually like, it might look like a slightly pain fold or whatever, but it's actually like an incredibly trivial fold, I would say. Well, I, just to push back slightly on this, because I have to say watching it, and that's probably why I found this hand in the first place. Uh, so it, it may be cropping up from my ignorance, really, is that when I saw this, I was just like, OK, you don't love it, but surely you're you just have to chopping, call kind of thing. You're yeah. just chopping too much and you just kind of have to make the call. So I was really interested by firstly Liv's fold. And then secondly, when I found out, which I did ahead of time, what Pio thought, Dara, maybe you will reveal all for the audience, because I think it's really, really interesting here. It certainly He's gives 
of bluff jam now, right? <laughs> no, it certainly gives credence to what Liv did yeah. in making the fold here, but it is also quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, Pio does call, but it thinks it's making 0.4 big blinds calling. And that's against Pio playing somebody who's bluffing the optimal frequency. So for Tonka to be bluffing enough in this spot, he has to start turning some pairs into bluffs. And the solver will do that. It'll choose a whole variety of hands, which a human would never really think about bluffing and turn them into a bluff at some frequency. Against an actual human who just doesn't have very many bluffs here, I think that just makes it a very, very clear fold. Yeah, that's what I mean, right? It's like I said there, I totally get the vibe of, oh, it's just a crank call you just gotta you gotta straight you know you're gonna chop a bunch but like i don't even know if you are gonna chop a bunch because that means that i have to just donk a jack for half pot and then donk a jack for pot on the river again too on like one of the worst rivers in the deck right it pairs it brings a flush in it's so insanely bad for me as well when i donk the turn i'm not donking two pairs so i don't approve to a boat olivier has like all of the boats the river just like ultra good for him so i would say us betting a naked jack isn't even gonna happen so yeah i would just say overall absolutely butchered by me (laughs) <laughs> um, really terrible hand. It's hard to see after watching this hand why I lost to Olivier Bousquet. Two <laughs> zero. Um, it is quite difficult to see. Don't get me wrong, but uh, but yeah. Thanks for making me relive this, guys. <laughs> Appreciate that. You're most welcome, Parker. I just want to ask, I suppose, because he used his reveal card to get you to show, and I suppose give himself some peace of mind at the time. Were you surprised when Liv had a jack in game? And I suppose now on reflection, are you surprised? I mean, probably I was surprised maybe then, you know, because clearly I took like a very bad line and my reasoning would have been, he better fucking call me down with a jack here, you know, like, but, uh, <laughs> which is like clearly incorrect because he folded. So like at the time, maybe I thought it was like, whoa, that's crazy. But like, obviously now looking back at it, you can hear in like the things that I'm saying that it's a trivial fold against myself at this time for sure. And honestly, you know what the funniest and saddest bit is, is like, he might be like using the reveal just to keep the fish in the game, keep the fish happy, you know, like not, <laughs> not, not not tap the glass too hard because like man this motherfucker like olivier is a genius you know like he knows that this is just like an easy fold look at him he like he grabs his chips he's like ah you know but like ultimately he folds within like 15 seconds or whatever and it's not that tough and he's like ah, i'm not gonna get too many opportunities to use this against this idiot anyway so toss it and expose your hand and you know pat myself on the back uh so yeah that's probably the worst realization so again i do appreciate you guys making me really love this this has been very cool indeed yeah, I just to rub a final piece of salt into the wound, just on the river. Pio does like the lead, but it uses a smaller a size. A third. It uses a third. No, yeah, no, it uses no, it, no, because, no, it, no, because no. we just don't have enough bluffs. The bigger size we use, the more bluffs we have to find. Yeah, and the Jack X just wants to fucking fold in Livier's shoes. So why? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It's okay, Tonka. It's almost over. We're, we're uh, almost back there. into the lab I go, boys. Thank <laughs> you very much. Well, look, a fascinating hand. I will admit to thinking it was a sigh, but also clear enough call on the river from Liv's point of view. So I learned an awful lot from this hand. I discovered that it's only break even at equilibrium. I would have just assumed there was a few more big blinds to be won. Worrying about like equilibrium or something like this on my hand like this, like already on the flop, we've taken a line that Pio doesn't really take, right? Because like Olivier bet half pot. And then again on the turn we're taking another line that doesn't really exist by like donking a zero percent donk situation obviously Pio's going to have their 0.15 percent slivers of perfectly balanced ranges blah, blah 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 but we don't gleam a ton of info from looking at this hand to the river on two lines that Pio wouldn't take you know what i'm saying yeah and one point we have made on past strategy segments is that bluff catching in generally doesn't really make you very much money in poker most of your money comes mm-hmm. from value betting and even when you have a very good bluff catch and you put it into the solver you'll usually be surprised at how little it makes then when you look at all the hands that are supposed to be bluffing and go well they're not actually bluffing mm-hmm. then then suddenly a bluff catch actually becomes very unprofitable for sure great stuff guys well look i really appreciate getting your thought process across all those streets parker thank you very much thank you for having me it's been fun thanks parker and so as we're getting going here, a little bit of action as we pick it up with blinds at 501,000. But a little domination nation to kick things off. Tonka with Jack Six, Bousquet with King Jack. Yeah, what a flop. Flops 10, King Queen. Oh man, are we gonna see it all go in here on the first hand? We got a flush draw, we got an open-ended straight draw, we got top pair. Good stuff all around. Tonka's got to win two in a row. That's right, sudden death. Tonka loses, Olivier wins it all. $200,000 in that beautiful belt. Now, they both have made a straight. 55. And they both have a flush draw. This is crazy. Bet is 5,500. 
How do you not raise here? Just calls, just thinks there's no reason to raise, nothing to worry about. He's got clubs to worry about. That is a club on the river. Tonka, despite starting this hand, dominated, manages to river a flush. 17. Tonka bet 17,000. Both of these players started this match with 100,000 in chips. Now, Olivier's been known to make a sick laydown or two. He's not just losing to clubs here. There are plenty of conceivable full houses out there, too. Obviously, any set of tens, kings, queens made a full house. King nine, queen nine, ten nine, all conceivable hands here. Wow, what a fold. What a fold. How are you that good at poker? Especially after not raising the turn. Most people be so stubborn there. I did. Nice hold. Good hand. 